Hello! <laughs> Welcome, hello, one and all, friends. Uh, I'm already so excited to see familiar and new faces uh, in the chat. Thank you so much, Dr. Zach, for that follow. I appreciate that so much. You're bringing us ever nearer to our goal of, of 140 for the month. You are you are a true hero. Uh, Ecstasy, as always, good to see you, good to have you. Nar, hello, Nar. Uh, and once again, Ailing with the, the clutch resub, my heart to you. Thank you so much. Seeing all these names already before we've even done anything uh, brings me such joy. And thank you for your time and your energy. You know I appreciate it. Uh, who am I to appreciate your time or your energy, you may be asking if you're new here or uh, if you're not new here because you hear me do this bit nearly every time we stream. Uh, I am Wolf Scott. I am your humble host, dungeon master, a uh, voice actor, person who likes nerdy things. Uh, I am the stream lead behind this channel, Level 1 Adventuring, which is a stream, a YouTube channel, a content platform uh, that talks about role-playing games, uh, both tabletop role-playing games, big group games like D&D, &D, uh, and also smaller, more indie, uh, more intimate projects like Firelights, which is what we'll be playing tonight, continuing our journey on episode 7 I think, which is very exciting. Um, if you haven't, please, fo please follow us on all those things, which I just mentioned, because we're always uh, happy to have you. Oh, is it seven? Nar? It might be seven. I was, I was looking through some of the previous episodes to remind me where we were last time we played, and I thought it was six, but it could be seven. You might be right. Uh, I'll, I'll know whenever I edit the, the stream titles. <laughs> uh, it, okay, you might be right. You might be right. It might be six. Um, but yes, please follow us on all of the things that I just mentioned because that's where you will find us doing all of the things. Uh, because the latest on YouTube is five. Oh, yes, you are correct, Nar, but I think I might be behind one upload on YouTube. I've been a little behind on a couple of uh, series. Uh this one and Celasta, I think, has a few extra episodes that has to be uh, pushed up because, you know, time gets busy. But I'll do that because I'll uh, have some time to spare the, the upcoming days on vacation, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but yes, follow us on all those platforms. We would greatly appreciate uh, you being there. Uh, also, the Discord. The Discord is where we chat, we meme, we talk about games we're going to play. It also is going to be, and I've been talking about this forever, but we're getting closer and closer, a play-by-post D&D 5e uh, server, which is set in the world of um, uh, the, the the homemade world of uh, where the campaign takes place. I can't remember the name of my own world, Mira. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun, so we hope to see you there as well. Uh, what did you list, miss last time, Nar? Oh. Well, we're going to talk about that. We're definitely going to talk about that. Yeah, sorry, I should have uploaded it before uh, before uh, today when I knew uh, everyone voted for Firelight. See, even on the Discord, we voted for Firelights, baby. That's why we're here. Um, oh, I should also mention, big shout out to Streamlabs and Stream Spell for all of the digital special effects uh, that you see on the screen. And there's a, a link down below in our About section if you'd like to download for yourself. And that also helps us out. And also, if you can, uh, gang, just my internet for a second. Uh, I'm going to try using tabletop audio again because I really like having background sound for the stream. I've had intermittent luck with the service because sometimes I hear the audio getting kind of crunchy. So if you notice that the music is getting kind of crunchy, let me know and I can drop it out. But we're going we're gonna to start with it and see where it goes. Um, Nar says, did you find a me? It's a me? Nario? <laughs> Sorry, that was really bad. That's a really dumb joke. <laughs> but I refuse to stop making bad, dumb jokes. Uh, all right, so I'm going to put this in performance. Actually, before we go into performance, let's go into our... Let's go into our solo stream. Uh, Nar, get it? Oh, Nar. I'm, I should be mad at you. That was, like, almost as bad as my joke, but it was slightly better because it was more relevant to the story at hand. So you have out... Dad joked me on my own stream. Get out of here! <laughs> you can't, you can't out dad joke me midstream. Uh, all right, let's go. To our Perfect. That doesn't look like anything's broken yet, which is wonderful. And I'll put this on performance mode so we can talk a little bit about where we were before and where we're going. Um, oh, I should mention uh, for for those of you who may be watching uh, and you're new to this the series. 
This is Firelights right here. Look at this. An entire solo RPG fits on two pages PDF and a trifold. You're not going to get much more elegant or, or simple or easy to understand than this. Um, and it, it, I mean, you're going to see as we play, I don't want to talk about the entire world before we even start, uh, but it's an incredibly evocative world, very interesting tools you can play with to sort of create a very compelling story, and it fits on these two pages, which is wonderful. So please uh, check it out on itch.io, uh, made by Fari RPGs. Um, RPD, who has created this game, has been very cool to our stream and even linked us on the Itch page, so uh, we are very thankful for them as well. Uh, but yeah, please check out this game. It is so much fun. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, hello! First time chatter! Hello to you! Hello to you! Thanks for stopping by! I'm glad you're here! Uh, you're about to join for some story, so uh, I hope you're, you're buckled in. You're ready to rock and roll. Um, okay. So what happened on the last time that we met? Uh, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with our game, this is our character, uh, Last Wish. Last Wish who talks in a mysterious, wizardy voice. Caterpie! Hello, Lurk Lurk! Oh my goodness, I'm seeing all of these faces that I love to see in, in the stream chat, as I know how to talk good with my words. Uh, yes, Nar will point out that Last Wish is known as Therapy Mantis. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Nar is uh, a Firelight, which is the name of the game, who are essentially these spiritual entities that help lead departed souls into like the afterlife, right? To their final rest. Uh, unfortunately for Last Wish, they are the very last Firelight because the afterlife has been... Uh, sort of assaulted by dark and, and wicked forces, which are preventing souls from passing on. Um, Anar? <laughs> Question mark? Question mark? We'll see, I am. Uh, or did I say Anar was and not Last Wish was? Last Wish was. Um, so Last Wish is unfortunately the very last Firelight who has to help lead souls to their final resting place. Uh, he also kind of looks like a little bug man, which is pretty cool. Uh, or I should say bug person. Um, <laughs> didn't, didn't mean to insert your name there, Nar. Sometimes my brain is firing faster than, or I should say my mouth is firing faster than my brain can keep up. Uh, what happened on our last session? Well, we, um, freed a soul from sort of, uh, servitude, if you will. There was a soul we met named Anar, who was turned into one of these cursed creatures, right? This sort of giant worm that was devouring souls. We saved them. Uh, we've been trying to find a way to purify their soul from this, like, cursed state and help them pass on. Uh, we ended up going back to where we found one of our original beacons, these big portals to the afterlife which are like big flames we met with one of our old allies who are these other sort of mysterious spiritual creatures uh known as the caretakers but they wouldn't let anar in uh because they knew that the soul was you know stained by the darkness there so pretty much they said uh, anar had to prove himself had to go out and collect a relic an artifact from their sort of um from their their higher uh, deific beings that run the afterlife right uh known as the oh my god it's been so long since i've played what are their names not the collectors those are those are the other guys we have to talk about the protectors the protectors um the protectors they have to find a relic about for the protectors uh to bring back to the caretaker so many names so many titles so that anar can prove themselves and be ushered into their uh final their final state uh however we brought Anar all the way uh, to a place we knew a relic would be, right? Under the care of these mysterious little creatures known as the Collectors. They sort of, uh, they find artifacts, relics, uh, pieces of history, and they sort of keep them all to themselves. Uh, we found their vault, and we were like, hey, let us in. Uh, and they said, not unless you pay up, essentially. Uh, and so we tried to offer what little treasures we have found along our journey to gain entrance. But it was not good enough. They said, "Nope. Uh, if you want in, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to come back with a little bit more." So, uh, crestfallen, heartbroken, we turned around and we decided to keep exploring to help find something to prove Anar's uh, hole of spirit. Uh, and we found ourselves in this very mysterious forest, uh, the Glade of Freedom. 
It was this uh, birchwood forest that uh, had all these symbols inscrawled on them that were acting as portals. All these um, rampant spirits were... Yeah, Last Wish and Nar got turned away a lot. You know what's funny that you mentioned that, uh, Nar, and not a uh, Nar? Um, the game is cited as Metroidvania-esque, right? Which implies a lot of backtracking and re-exploring areas that you've already been through. And when I was first reading the document, I was like, huh, I wonder how that's going to work. There's really nothing forcing you to, to re-explore areas, right? In the rules, there's not like a rule that says, oh, to progress, you have to go backwards. But it is interesting in how the story has expanded you know, situations have forced us to rely on previous touch points and characters and spaces on the map. So that is interesting how that's worked out. That's, it means the game is working as intended, which is good. Uh, but it's just a very unique sort of little uh, little hitch I've discovered. Uh, but anyway, we went, we went into this forest. These spirits were running wild through the woods, running through these portals. The whole point of the Glade of Freedom was to help spirits... Um, sort of experience parts of their lives uh, that they or their afterlives that they never got to have in life to put them more at peace uh before they finally shuffled off their their mortal coil should you should you will but it's kind of been left to its own devices since the uh the veil and the afterlife has kind of turned to darkness but it was being sort of watched over by another little unique faction of characters known as the Wayfarers, these creepy little gremlins. <laughs> these sort of like wood spirits uh, that were running around in the branches, watching over the spirits that were running through the, the, the trees and the portals. Uh, and they saw us and they're very interested and they started asking us questions, sort of mocking us and we asked questions back. They're sort of like this neutral force that was kind of very unsettling. And we asked if they had any any treasure. Caterpie says they're cute. <laughs> Tommy says the Wayfarers are back. Well, we don't know. I mean, we've left them for now, at least as uh, the last episode. But who knows? We may we may have to come back. Uh, but the Wayfarers, um, we asked if they you know had any treasure that we could donate to the the collectors so that Anar could find peace. And they sort of kept mocking us, and they wanted us more or less to prove ourselves worthy of whatever we were going to find. Uh, and so they became a big cloud of wind and leaves and pushed us into one of the portals, right? Which uh, separated us from Anar, ultimately put us in two different parts of the forest. And so we had to go find our lost spirit friend Anar before we could progress and, I guess, uh, appease the wayfarers in the process. In so doing, and this is where it got really dicey, uh, we actually found another spirit on the way through our journey. Uh, their name was Chibet, and Chibet was a beggar, at least in life, and now was sort of this very nervous, cowering, um, fearful creature um, who was very close to completely... Man, mood, same says Ailing, a pathetic, cowering little beggar. <laughs> Ailing, is that you? Does that resonate with you? Um, but this uh, this Chibet character um, was sort of so lost in the woods for so long that their tether to the spirit world, what was keeping them still conscious and sane as like a ghostly apparition, was kind of leaving them. And as we've discovered throughout our journey so far, that when a spirit becomes broken in that way, they become very susceptible to manipulation, uh, particularly from the dark force, which has been plaguing the veil, which is called the doom of the veil, the sort of disembodied, vile presence, which has been thwarting our efforts uh, at, so far as Last Wish has been standing. Um, and it unfortunately happened that even though we convinced Chibet to follow us, uh, we were w running through this forest trying to find an R, trying to collect ourselves, and we just couldn't do it. We wandered for, out like, I would say hours, but this is the spirit world, right? So maybe it was longer, maybe it was days, maybe it was weeks, who knows? But we wandered and we wandered, we could not find an R, and we actually pushed ourselves beyond the brink, beyond the point of, of consciousness, and Last Wish, you know, collapsed in, on, in the forest floor, uh, and when they awoke, whoever knows how long later, Anar actually found us, because Anar is a talented uh, hunter and tracker, um, but Chibet was nowhere to be seen. 
And so, feeling very defeated, we decided to try and find our way out of the forest, but not before one other moment uh, befell our, our hero. Uh, as, let me see if I have the, uh, yes, as we found out that Chibet was actually claimed by the Doom of the Veil while we were... <laughs> yeah, a me found a me found us. A Nar found uh, last wish, but unfortunately, who else found us was Chibet, who was actually in that moment, uh, their soul was broken and stolen by the Doom of the Veil, and they were turned into a creature known as a Screecher, which is this uh, image right here, sort of a, uh, a a a a plume of smoke and flame that was just screaming, and its and its yells were creating concussive force and heat. Um, and burning the force and throwing us around. Uh, so once again, we had to appeal to uh, Chibet's, God, so many characters, names Better Nature to try and save them from themselves. Uh, and in that, miraculously, we were actually successful. So despite the fact that we lost Chibet and Chibet's soul was converted into a monster, we were actually able to... Um, uh, push back against the Doom of the Veil's influence and heal Chibet. So Chibet is now back to their very nervous, very fearful, very frightful self. Um, and so for now, the, the curse is waned, right? Which is good. Um, we then managed to finally find our way out of the forest. And the Wayfarers, who seemed very pleased with sort of our... Our, our, their test will say, you know, they sort of knew that there were souls in there that were that were nearing destructive point, and we actually managed to save them and repel um, the dark forces for now. Uh, Nar says, "Last wish really keeps being like, I can fix them. Listen, <laughs> or say, we can fix them. Uh, this one can fix them. Uh, last wish. He's, uh, you know, they're uh, they're therapy mantis for a reason." Um, but yeah, so we actually managed to get some treasures from the Wayfarer, um, and <laughs> being the therapy mantis they are, they actually can fix them. I mean, been trying, been trying. So far, we got like a decent success rate, um, and that's kind of where we left off. So we got some treasures from the Wayfarers, we saved Chibet, we're back with Anar, we're at the edge of the forest, and now it's sort of our, our decision on where we go next and, you know how we get there. So in the interest of that, let's pull up our handy dandy map. Uh, for those of you who are new to the stream, the map is the entire game kind of runs on a, a deck of cards and a couple of dice, which you roll uh, to help you figure out what's happening and where you're at and where you're going. Uh, so let's take a look at where we are at. We are at the Glade of Freedom, which is the five of diamonds, which is right here. So we're at the edge of the map. Now, the known map, right? Now, we could explore further, but we also now have a bunch of treasures which we could possibly turn in to the collectors to see if they'll let us in, which I feel like is probably the thing to do because if we're going to backtrack anyway, we might as well backtrack towards the caretakers who are the ones who are holding our, <laughs> our sort of our portal hostage here. Um... Although we could always find a new portal as we discover. Um, all right, so that means we want to go to the Three of Clubs, which is here. Oh, that's only one space away. That's pretty close. I feel like it's worth going there. We've got a lot of treasures now. Okay. So in the interest of that, let's let's do a little let's do a little uh. Hmm. Maybe we should do some scouting first. No. No, I'm too tempted. I, I'm like, I'm, uh. No, I think we should just go back. I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to roll something else and something else bad will happen. Uh, we should just go back. I should be smart. Um, all right, let's take a look. How's my fatigue right now? I only got one fatigue. So my health is pretty, my health is pretty good. Uh, okay. Let's... Let's see if there's any obstacle in our path getting back from point A to point B. So we'll get an answer from the Oracle, which if y'all can see over here, getting an answer from the Oracle is at the bottom of the page. So how this works is we draw our two cards, 
our one and our two. <laughs> Straight down the middle, there's a five. And then we roll two dice, um, which is d6, right? <laughs> wow, it's been a long time since I played. Uh, yes. Roll 2d6, bum bum. Okay, so normally you would choose to apply what approach you're taking to the roll, but because this is just random random chance, it's just the, we're asking the oracle, uh, It's you don't use your approach stat, you just use whatever is written here on the oracle. So I'm going to say it's just as likely if unlikely that something happens. So we'll say it's a plus one, so a seven becomes an eight, which means it is higher than both results which means um there's three states uh light shade and darkness so good kind of okay and then bad we got good which is good uh so i'm gonna say with that we safely managed to progress forward um for a light to me i'm interpreting that as there is no dangerous obstacle that would get in the way of our progression um, so I'm going to hold these cards off to the side for now. But I am interested, just for some story purposes, um, is there any is there any sort of conversation that happens? We're walking now with two different souls. Um, so perhaps, you know, a little conversation strikes up. Let's roll some dice. Five and a four. Looking at my little table here, five and a four. <laughs> Equality and persuade, I'm gonna roll two more. Two and a six. Two and a six. Tradition or secure? Ooh, interesting. Two and six. Secure. Secure quality. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna choose secure quality out of those out of those mixes. Let's go to the journey. And we're gonna say So walking back to the mountain. Um secure equality. The reason I'm gonna say secure equality for the theme of the scene is we know we have we have Chibet, and Chibet is you know, sort of by their own infliction, uh, they feel they feel as though they are less than, right? Like they have gone on to say in our last um, our last session how sort of woeful they were and sort of how pathetic they were, and that's and that that weakness is partially what allowed them to be so susceptible to the the doom of the veil, sort of perverting their soul via darkness, right? And so I think there's you know there's probably um, a scene where you know we we make our way through the forest and we're winding our way up towards the mountains right and now we and we actually pass that old statue there was a statue of the firelights that was sort of decrepit and destroyed um on our way in it's one of the things that um that last wish had a vision of in the forest itself um so and we can see Oh yeah, that's probably interesting too because we described how around that 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 statue of the old firelight, there were all of these lost souls that were sort of hoarding around it because they knew, even though they were sort of feral at this point, they'd kind of lost their their cognizance, right? They were sort of just these wandering um, sort of uh, fail state spirits, which was very similar to what uh, Chibet had become, they're just sort of standing around the statue as if there's a part of them that knows that that is, that is where the firelight should go to, like, corral spirits and, and help lead them forward, but because we're the last firelight around, um, and they've been gone for so long, you know, that, that functionality, that, that, um, that delivery system has, has, is defunct, right? So they're, they're all just sort of standing there idly. They're sort of almost like an animalistic intelligence. They recognize they should be there, but they don't know why. And we actually tried to interact with them before, but they didn't listen to us. Um, and so I think there is, you know, a part of Last Wish who's walking, you know, they're walking stick in hand, marching proudly forward. You know, I think there's definitely a, a part of Last Wish which um, feels a little... Uh, justified, sort of reinvigorated by the fact that even though they almost lost Chibet, they were able to to reclaim them. Um, 
so there, I think there's like a newfound sort of confidence to the step. Um, and of course, Anar, who is a talented tracker, is sort of keeping pace right up alongside of us. And also, probably a bit more, um, uh, probably also sort of brimming with a bit more excitement, given that we are trying to return now to the Collectors with, um, with the treasures that we might need. Uh, but I think Chibet is lagging behind a bit. Uh, I think Chibet... You know, they're wearing these, like, these heaping robes, uh, these, like, sort of rat ratty, tattered cloths, hunched over. We sort of describe them as always sort of fiddling with their hands and sort of looking around kind of nervously. Uh, and I think, you know, they see all of the spirits who are sort of trapped in this fugue state by the statue and they stop and they're sort of staring, sort of, I don't want to say longingly, but there's maybe some sort of recognition of what those spirits are going through now, sort of almost being on the other side. And it probably is a few paces uh, before Anar and um, Last Wish notices this, right? I think, uh, you know, uh, Anar might be the first one, the keen uh, ear of a tracker, not hearing the footfalls of their compatriot behind them, probably stops for a moment, takes a look, see, spots Chibet, sort of wringing their hands and staring at the at the statues and sort of gives a slight prod into the the exoskeletal mass that is our insectoid last wish um nods are in that direction and last wish you know holding the 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 firelight staff turns their head their antenna sort of twitching curiously uh chibet this one I cannot help but notice you have stopped your march. And, you know, begins to mosey over, using the walking stick to give themselves a little bit more leverage as they approach Shabbat, kind of giving them a respectful distance, but drawing closer. Uh, I think also notices that Shabbat is making eyes on the spirits and clocks that, turns their head towards Shabbat, do you require more rest? Are you injured? Uh, tell this one, we will accommodate you. And to this, Chibet, you know, sort of it, it, it instinctively sort of like almost uh, like flinches hearing like someone coming up from like to their side, even though it's last wish and sort of immediately averts their eyes. Uh, no, no, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, uh, well... Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not fine. I'm... Look at them, Last Wish. And sort of, like, points in the direction of the spirits who are all sort of, like, aimlessly wandering around the statue. Some of them are, like, just laying on their backs, staring up into the sky idly. Some, like, paw at the stone uh, as if they're interacting with it in some way, but it's completely wrong. It's just sort of, like, what their minds think they should do. Um, they're... They're broken. They've been out, out here for so long. They've been, they've been suffering under, under the the weight of the of the doom of the veil, like I did. And well, I broke. Last wish, I I I became a curse. I was ready to hurt people. I was ready to hurt you. And well, why should I be saved? What's What's so good about me? Why should... What makes me any different f from them? And sort of like is pointing at the spirits and, you know, beginning to... You can see the equivalent of spiritual sweat sort of uh, brimming at their brow. You should just leave me. Uh, I'm just dead weight. I already... I already fell prey to the doom once. Who, who says I won't do it again? Who says I won't do it again on the mountain? Who says I won't throw you off? I could... I could ruin this. I could ruin this for everyone. I could be the reason why the last firelight dies. I can't... I can't be responsible for that last wish. And just sort of like... Um, uh, Logi says, hmm, is statue? Question mark? I'd love to know what you mean by that. <laughs> um, and... Last wish, like, hears and feels... Uh, Chibet sort of growing in intensity and then quickly draws forward and like gently places a hand just sort of on the on the back of the shoulder and 
closes uh, their eyes and sort of in in instinctively sends sort of like a warm pulse of energy. Um, sounds like, is that you since they're around some statue? Oh, is, is Last Wish the statue? Um, interesting. I think, I don't think it is. Um, at least in my mind, all of the firelights, they don't have a uniform appearance. Um, or petrified. Ooh, that's interesting too. Perhaps some of the, the former firelights were petrified, especially during the doom of the veils. Uh, occupation of the of the veil that's interesting that could be we'll find out i'll put that in the back of my in my head um but i think i think we i think we sort of touched on the fact that in certain visions we've seen other firelights that look different from last wish i think the 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 insectoid form that uh, that a firelight takes is is unique to that being right when they're hatched from their stone egg which happened all the way in episode one right uh whatever you know whatever the protector's assemble right you know whatever cosmic forces make a firelight i think it's unique every time at least i like to imagine that i like to imagine that the firelights all kind of you know are a little different they might have similar shared traits like i think they might all have some of that bioluminescent like ember like um coloring on their carapaces you know and i think they probably all wear a uniform clothing like they probably all wear cloaks of red or crimson you know tunics or something that denotes them as you know, the sort of firekeeper character. Um, but other than that, I feel like the actual insectoid traits of them might might be kind of different. Um, but yeah, Last Wish puts puts a hand on an um, on Chibet's shoulder, and there's a, a pulse of warmth uh, that radiates through their body and like into Chibet's shoulder, and almost immediately, almost like you know, uh, like massage oil on someone's back. You can already see the tension begin to like to lessen and sort of um. As Chibet sort of like melts into that sensation for a moment and, and calm sort of washes over them uh, as Last Wish opens their eyes and takes a look over at Chibet. You are different, Chibet. You did fall, this is true, but you also found the strength to regain yourself. True, with this one's help, but... That is what this one does. That is what this one is for. To help spirits. To help people like you. And to help people like them. Last Wish says, as he sort of turns their head back towards the, the more feral spirits by the statue. It is true that now they seem beyond repair. In fact... I have already tried many a time to, this one has tried many a time to converse with them, to aid them in some way, and they remain unwilling to follow. And turns back. But this will not always be the case. The hold of the Doom of the Veil is still strong in this place, and so their spirits remain weak susceptible, vulnerable. But in time, with every beacon that we light, they will find their strength. The doom of the Veil's grip on this place will wane, and they will find themselves again. And when they do, this one will be there, just as this one was there for you, to help them reclaim their better selves, and then to lead them to their rest. This one promises you, Chibet. They will not continue to suffer, and you should not suffer any longer than you already have. You are just as deserving of safety and of healing as them. I will ensure it. This one will ensure it. And Chibet lets the words roll over them and takes a look over at the, the, the spirits who are still sort of idly wandering. Um, 
And at this point, I think I think actually a Nar would step forward um, and says, Chibet, I know you hardly know me. We've spent but such short time together, but what Last Wish says is, is the truth. I was much like you when they met me. I was lost, I was broken, I was cursed. I was a monster. I did things, terrible things for time untold, and it was because of Last Wish and the power of the Firelights that I was saved. If I can do it, you can do it. Just follow us, see where the road goes. There's no need to give up on, on it now, not when we're still so far. And Shabet, I think, watches Anar with almost just wide-eyed, sort of um, mis almost like mystified, like to think of another person who had become a curse and somehow reverted that um, seems so far away, even though they have experienced it. And takes one long look back at the, the spirits, back to the pair in front of them, wringing their hands, sort of begins to nod their head frantically. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, if 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 you if you say so, uh, uh I I wouldn't know any better. So, um, thanks. Let's just um, and like takes one last look at the spirits again, as like one I think like re rears back their head and releases like a gargled, airy howl, you know, uh, like into the into the air. And I think a part of that almost like pangs inside of um inside of Chibet for remembering brief existence as a Screecher, um, and that sort of unnerves them, uh, and immediately wants to, to, to get away from this place as soon as possible. Um, I, I, I think we just keep going. I think staying here makes my head just hurt a little. It is understood. Come, we near the peak. And Last Wish will turn and, like, continue to walk back towards the mountain. So, yeah, we'll just have a moment where the characters interact with one another. Why not? So, now, we gotta go... We gotta go find... We are walking through the the roads into the mountains. We've described the mountains before. Uh, there are these huge, towering, sort of obelisk-like peaks that dominate over the valley. They're ancient symbols scrawled into the stone. Uh, some of the stonework actually sort of has broken off of the mountains and sort of levitates freely in the air as if they are held aloft by some um, invisible force, right? Uh, this world, which is sort of constantly at twilight, you know, the, the peaks are sort of um, kept under sort of alien constellations, unnatural stars right in the sky. Uh, and there's a constant sort of swirling mist, uh, fog that that is always a few steps ahead of us. So it makes the journey up the mountain no different, uh, no no more uh, what's the word uh, simple or less dangerous than before. But luckily we have avoided any dangers, maybe because we're a little bit more familiar with the journey this time around. Uh, but we find ourselves near the peak. Uh, of the mountains, uh, the vault of the collectors, as we've named it, and now we stand before this great and and uh, powerful door. So, for those of you uh, who were not here for this episode, the collectors sort of wear these masks, right? And the masks, uh, they actually sort of change. They will change symbols, um, which aren't exactly expressions, although some may look like expressions, and they evoke the feeling that the collector is. Uh, exuding in that moment and the door to the vault uh actually looks like sort of a massive collector's mask right which is sort of uh uh built into the stone um and as we approach it same as before uh there's almost like uh, an ambient light which radiates off of the mask um and <laughs> nar says oh yeah it reminds me of the mayor from halloween town that is such a good Call. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do imagine that, like, for the actual collectors who are wearing their sort of, um, their traveling cloaks, right? 
I imagine the mask actually shifts underneath the cloak, right? So like another mask appears in its place, but you can't see, you know, what, the physics of that underneath the, the hood. So very much like the Mayor of Halloween Town. For the stone, because it is actually working like a door, I don't imagine that the mask shifts, but the symbols absolutely do. Uh, Loki says, they have a very punchable face, or faces. I think what they have is a very punchable personality. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you can direct that at their face, uh, as much as you see fit. Except for Last Wish, because Last Wish is too nice. Um, and so, just like before, I think we see this ambient light sort of radiate out of the mask and sort of becomes almost like a spotlight on the center of the mountain peak, um, which centers on Last Wish... Anar, and now Chibet. And Chibet, you know, I think instinctively the light shines and sort of, <laughs> sort of like flinches and almost ducks behind Last Wish and Anar, who are, you know, more resolute standing in front of the light. They've seen it before. Uh, and it m might even say that Chibet, like, takes a handful of um, Last Wish's cloak and, like, peers nervously from around the red fabric to like see what's happening um but you know the light is now shining on them and now you can see the reflections of the characters inside of the metal sheen of the mask and that stays for a moment until the very reflections of the world around the mask including the characters begins to melt and blend together and shift and form a new image now a symbol right one that is almost uh almost quizzical, you know, curious in its expression as it etches itself across the metal, uh, the light shining down on the trio as you hear uh, a very familiar, very punchable voice. Oh, it's been so long, Last Wish. Oh, we'd barely given you a, another thought. We imagined you'd just given up on this fanciful dream of saving this Anar, uh, no, fellow. Uh, <laughs> Canopy, very punchable voice. Yes, immediately punchable. Um, <laughs> as, uh, Last Wish, uh, you know, sort of <sighs> has to, like, unclench their mandibles for a moment, needing to put on a good face for the, for the collectors as much as possible. Takes a step forward. Uh... <laughs> Ailing <laughs> says I'm gonna throttle them if they say one more thing. <laughs> well, they're, they have to say more things. I have to narrate them. They're gonna say something. Um, and so Last Wish takes a step forward. Oh, great and merciful collectors. Uh, it is Last Wish. This one has returned to your gracious vault uh, here to deliver unto you more bounty from this one's and like as as they're speaking uh i think like the light sort of brightens for a moment and sort of like narrows even even further on last wish oh and wait wait one moment and i you have uh, hold your your speech hold your praise we will hear it we'd love to hear it but before you continue who is that strange, uh, misshapen little little stowaway you have behind you there Last wish. Um, and to this, like, Chibet uh, sort of scampers and tries to now get behind Anar, I think. Uh, and Anar sort of, like, almost off balance as Chibet scampers. Uh, apologies, collectors. Uh, uh, this one does not mean to uh, infiltrate your, your great vault. Uh, the, the, this is uh, a friend. Uh, their name is... Chibet, they are another lost spirit. Oh, do not tell me, Last Wish, that you've found another poor soul to string along your misguided journey. Have you not? <coughs> Nar says, as high a patient stat as Last Wish has, I think even this one's patience is tested to its limits when dealing with the collectors. Listen! Until we get in that vault, Last Wish has to be so nice. We need the vault. We need it. <laughs> I mean, perhaps there is a possibility there's a relic elsewhere in the world, but this is our best bet. It's our best bet. Um, 
And then last wish, you know, sort of a... <clears throat> uh, yes, this one does intend to ferry another soul to their rest, as this one is destined to do. Customer service rep of the year award, <laughs> says Loki. <laughs> yeah, the protectors better be paying attention. Last wish better be up for the biggest possible promotion. Um, uh, as, as the collector says, Oh, well, of course, destined to do. Yes, just like all of the other firelights before you were destined to do. <laughs> right, right, of course. Well... Uh, it is so good of you to return, Last Wish, your noble quest and aims in mind. Uh, I do believe the last we spoke, you were woefully a little short-changed for our interaction, were you not? This one does recognize that before, their contribution to your vaults was meager... Uh, but uh, you will be pleased to know that this one has scoured new breadths of the veil and does not come back empty-handed, collectors. And to this, I think Last Wish, you know, reaches into their cloak. There's a, the jangling of some objects and some leathers uh, as they unveil a pouch. And you can almost, you know, the, the symbol on the on the, the, the face changes, and it's almost sort of like a wide-eyed, greedy, almost like frothing, like, ooh, like, show us, you know, sort of like so excited. Um, and to this, Last Wish opens up their, their little treasure pouch, and what do we present? We have an interesting amount of things. We have, we have a piece of the Statue of Hope. That's what we originally came here with, the, um, the sort of starlight geode that was the inside of the, the statue. So we still have that, which they turned away once, but hey, I mean, it's something. We have, um, oh, we have some uh, ever-burning ash from the fires of the, the beacon statue from the, from the little, uh, the torch. All right, it's pretty cool. And then we also have two branches from the runic birch trees that were inside the Glades of Freedom. Those were gifted to us by the uh, the Wayfarers. I'm gonna make the uh, the text a little bit bigger so hopefully you have a better chance of seeing that. So we actually have five treasures right now. So we have some enchanted ash, we have some um, some magic birch branches, we have the, the starlit geode. We got some cool stuff this time around. Um, as uh, we approach, the 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 collector uh the the statue and we lay out our treasures uh this these rare and unique finds this one donates to the great and charitable vault of the collectors uh may you learn much of the history of the veil vale from them and may it allow us uh, entry and uh, prove your guidance true in the rescuing of these poor souls. Uh, <laughs> well, Loki and Nar, when you put it that way, stick and rock and fire. <laughs> I don't know. It seems Last Wish is very is very impressed with this with this hall. Okay, is very impressed with this hall. I don't know why you gotta you gotta downplay it. Um. All right, so here we go. So now we actually have to try to buy the information. We got to buy our entry into this place. So, uh, so just like before, we are gonna grab uh, our our two dice, or I, sh I should say, our two cards, so we can see how difficult this trade or transaction will be. Oh goodness, come on. We, you know, last time. Does anybody remember how terribly we rolled last time? And that's why we got lost in the woods and lost Chibet? Like, give us something this time. Um. <laughs> oh, rock and stick and, and, and fire. That is what the collectors will, will say. I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, all right, so let's flip these cards and see what we got. A two. And a four. Oh, and a point of inspiration. 
Ooh, writing this down on my character sheet. I said I'm writing this down on my character sheet. One point of inspiration. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna say, who said that to me? Loki, thank you, Loki, for the point of inspiration. I will write that down right here in case we need it. But a two and a four is actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, and if they're not satisfied, I think it's just boss fight time at this point. <laughs> We're, we'll, we'll fight our way into the vault. We will save the spirits by destroying the collectors. Hilarious. Um, okay, two and a four is actually a pretty, I mean, come on. We gotta beat that. Uh, hey, Link says, kick their ass! Uh, I'm gonna roll to d6. Oh. Maybe. Maybe that's real good. Um, yeah, that's a nine. So, by kick their ass, I mean, you know, out, out parlay, out, out bargain, uh, the, the collectors. Uh, remove the thorn of the veil. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm gonna save that one for later. I'm gonna write that under NPCs, the collectors, <laughs> the thorn of the veil. <laughs> the the collectors are definitely like a necessary evil in the afterlife. Like it's they have a lot of cool stuff. Everybody needs to talk to them, but they are such assholes. Uh, okay, so luckily for us though, we have succeeded in this check. Which, just thank you, because dear lord, did we really need to fail another one after everything that's happened? Um, and so, with that, oh, there's going to be a couple interesting things that happen here. Okay, so let's go back to the Three of Clubs. Um, first thing that's going to happen is, I mean, we totally overkilled that roll. Because for each, for each treasure we provide... Um, it gives us another plus one to our roll. So we rolled a nine straight up. Then we, so we rolled a 14. Like we're in, you know what I mean? Um, so unfortunately it does spend all of our treasures. I don't think we can retroactively be like, well actually Last Wish thinks this one is not, <laughs> like I feel like, you know, I don't think we can do that for the collectors. I don't think they would be up for us uh, uh, rescinding a couple of the items on offer, uh, but Hey, we got in, and that is all that mattered. So I'm going to erase our current treasure pile. We're back to zero. Um, hey, they said they didn't like the rock, says Nart. Well, they didn't like just the rock. They, of course, they're the collectors. They're going to want the rock. But, you know, they're also going to need a stick and a... <laughs> And some and some and some dirt. They're gonna need a stick and some dirt if they're if they're gonna take the rock. It's just how it is. Um, and so, as last wish, you know, spreads all of their treasures out before the collectors. Uh, that 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 uh, that greedy sort of like a frothing expression then changes to one of excitement. Uh, and and you know, sort of. Um, there, you can almost see like stars in the eyes of, of this masked face. Uh, oh my last wish. How you've outdone yourself. Truly we weren't expecting anything from you. In fact, we if we are to be honest, we just expected you were never going to come back after you embarrassed yourself last time. But Oh, how you have turned our expectations upside down, last of the firelights. You are most welcome into the vault with all of the slated donations, of course. But of course, but of course, but of course, but of course, but of course. <laughs> the glass wish finally, you know, relents. Um, <laughs> Lemmy Adams says, hey, Ling. <clears throat> Who was I die? Look at them being mean to therapy mantis. Um, with that being said, uh, please try not to break anything. Uh, this is meant for, this place is meant for very uh, delicate uh, hands very knowledgeable studied minds we can't have anyone just trouncing about knocking things over all haphazardly you understand trust that we will be on our very best behavior in your most hallowed halls collectors if that is the case we bid you welcome and with that i think the symbol then shifts uh, to one that um, 
almost uh, uh, exemplifies, you know, uh, unlocking. It's like, uh, it's the very, the very image, the very rune uh, of the concept of opening. Uh, as these masks sort of splits in this perfect seam right down the middle. There's actually no, like, welding of the metal, you know, in the actual form, but it's almost like this alien material, right? It's, like, perfectly sculpted, able to break and fuse uh, as both of the sides split and shift outward and sort of recess back into the stone. <clears throat> Excuse me. As the, the sort of... Uh, well, actually, I think at first it looks like cavernous darkness, right? Like, from a distance. But as soon as the doors finally open, there's sort of a whoosh, you know, like a, a sort of um, a flare of light that is like deeper into the tunnels, as you can see, like on either side of the cavern, two torches burn with like a, an ethereal blue light, you know, <laughs> that like burn bright. And then a couple moments later, <laughs> Another set lights a little bit further down into the cavern and then <laughs> like, you know, leading into this twisting labyrinth that is the vault. Um, and it sort of waits expectantly for the three of us. Uh, Last Wish turns around, faces Anar. Anar is, of course, overwhelmed, overjoyed. Um, uh, quickly, we, we, we mustn't keep them waiting. We're so close. Um... And, like, begins to take a few steps. But Last Wish takes uh, their walking stick and, like, extends it outward to sort of catch Anar on the chest and, like, hold them at, hold them at bay for a moment as, you know, they look down towards Chibet, who is still cowering. Um, now slowly, Anar. We were just granted entrance, and as you've seen, the Collectors are very particular about their things. We must ensure that... We are careful, and we are respectful at all times. And he leans forward. Even if they don't necessarily deserve it. Yes? Uh, yes, of course. He looks down at your bed. I... Uh, are, are you sure you don't want to legit leave me outside? What, what if I... What if I bump into something? I... I, 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 I can't be in a place like this. There's, there's too much going on. There's... Uh, there's too too much important things that I could get into. The, the, the stakes are... Chibet. You are a part of this place. The Vale, just as much as the Collectors, just as much as Anar and, and this one. Come inside. See the history of this... Of the, this Vale. Of Penumbra itself. Perhaps facing it will allow you to weather it a bit more ably. And to this, Chibet sort of shakes their head nervously. If, if you think it's okay, if you think I can do it, I know you can, Chibet. This one knows you can, Chibet. Now come. Um, as they begin, as he, you know, removes the walking stick from Anar's chest, as Anar nods, and Chibet Sort of, uh, I think Last Wish sort of helps hoist, you know, takes Chibet's hand, pulls them up onto their feet as the three of them walk further in. Uh, Nar says, do you think there are more individual collectors inside the vault or do you think there's more masks? Maybe not as big as, ooh, ooh, maybe not as big as the entrance keeping watch on the vault. That's very interesting. You know, the only thing that we've seen, we've only seen one collector out in the wild and that collector, you know, had the mask, had the robes, um, was carrying all of their stuff, like the, all those sort of all their packs on their bodies. But we know that they have these sort of long, skinny, dark limbs. They actually have six of them that are like hidden inside of their cloaks. Uh, but we don't know anything of their bodies beyond that. As far as we know, their limbs could just be manifestations of some other force, right? Um, interesting. I kind of like the idea that maybe the collectors aren't like a physical force unless they like choose to be, right? I like that idea, Nar. I'm going to play with that. Um, okay, so I think once we're inside, the collector's vault to me, I imagine, is kind of like, um, oh man, what is that like famous painting of like the infinite staircase? that like, you know, is always sort of uh, in on itself and like collapsing into 
into infinite uh, staircases. Is that is that MC Escher? Am I making that up? Um, but I, I think you all know what I'm talking about, right? That that the, the sort of a uh, the never-ending, replicating, optical illusion staircase, right? I imagine the inside of the vault is like that, but cut into alcoves in the walls, um, and perhaps resting on pedestals that, like, raise up from the stonework are various items, right? Um, from across the history, the known world, of of penumbra and the veil they can be things as innocuous as as we've brought sticks and and ashes uh and stones because those things as we've discovered in this world do sort of have like a, a psycho spiritual resonance to them and they normally have a deeper meaning beyond their physical expression um but they can also be you know, wondrous objects, uh, actual treasures, right? Um, uh, pieces of, of, of armor and clothing from great figures, former firelights, um, uh, famous other spiritual entities that we haven't discovered yet, right? Perhaps even some of the, like, the porcelain shards and, like, the scribing tools of the caretakers, it, it, it truly is a treasure trove of, of various aspects of Penumbra in the Veil, vale, be them small or big. And I think that, you know, around the, the stones themselves are etched with text, right? Which is so minuscule. You know what I mean? Like, it, the, the, the naked eye would have such a difficult time reading this text, but probably not for a collector, right? But it's etched into the stonework around the objects, which, like, for us, I almost imagine it's it's kind of like a vault it's in, in so that, like, it holds valuable things, right? Treasures. But it's also like a museum, right? And so these etchings in the stonework, in, the, in, like, the language of the spirits, like, it's almost like, you know, when you read, like, a plaque on a museum where it's like, you know, this is from the artist from this time and this is what inspired them. But it's, like, written into the stonework itself. And, like, the text is just, like, never-ending. It just, it actually goes around the alcove or around the podium and spreads down and spreads down. And it will actually connect into text from other um, demonstrations and other um, showings. Almost, like, showing how the history links, you know? Like, perhaps one treasure has a particular story which will go off in this direction and you'll see the text scrawl across the stone until it links with another object's history over here, which will then blend into that text. And so the walls themselves are sort of scrawled with this endless cyclical and ever looping history of the infinite vast amount of time, you know, that is the spirit world and like dotted by these very significant events. Um, I think, uh, and oh, sorry, looking at chat here. Uh, what if their beings resides in their masks and the bodies they pilot are just so they can travel around and collect things? Ooh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I think I think I was going to say too, when it comes to those alcoves and those podiums, I think the masks, there are masks, which are embedded into the stonework near those objects, right? And they sort of act like sentries. You know, they're sort of like watching. They're sort of like keeping the object safe. But you could probably walk up to one and be like, you know, tell this one more about the object here. And be like, oh, well, uh, I thought you'd never ask, sort of a thing, you know? Um, and yeah, so, so perhaps they walk in, and there is sort of just a single mask floating, you know, in the air, sort of like eye level for, for um, Last Wish. And, you know, as they gingerly approach it, there is sort of like an explosion of of smoke, like darkness from behind the mask. And it's almost like the spiraling vortex, right? And it's sort of fanning outward. And as it's fanning outward, you can actually see that in that smoke and that like sort of inky darkness, there's it's almost like cloth, right? And so right before our eyes, you can see this like nexus of shadow sort of branch out and become this sort of mass of, of, of dark cloth that is held sort of aloft in the center by the mask. 
as it sort of like takes the familiar sort of collector shape, um, you know, with all of the various um, packs and satchels sort of like shifting out of the folds of its of its um, of its cloak and sort of like finding their place along its body. Um, as like all six of those like dark limbs extend outward from underneath the cloak and sort of give their idea of like a bow. You know, some arms go down like this, some go out, you know, some um, some almost like raise their hands up in like a sort of like a, a excited gesture. Um, last wish. Such a pleasure to have the last of the firelights in our humble domain. Please, and sort of like extends their hands outward, uh, and sort of last wish takes that as like a, a, as permission to step forward, and is like, this one thanks you, and begins to walk forward, and <laughs> I think the collector sort of like shifts back in front of uh, last wish and like extends their arms outward. They probably even like stretch a little like unsettlingly long outside of the cloak, and is like, please, and like sort of like <laughs> keeps the hands outstretched. And at this point, Last Wish is like, of course, of course. And, like, <laughs> puts the objects in the palms of each of the six, you know, hands. Um, as uh, the Collector, then the arms sort of retract into the darkness of, of, like, the inside of the cloak. And those objects disappear. And I think, like, as it disappears, you can probably see the the blue torchlight like shift and like uh flicker all throughout the caverns as for a moment you can even see like the actual endless staircases and hallways behind them um shift and twist and expand and it's almost as like as soon as the collector has like pulled these objects into themselves which somehow is transported into the deeper recesses of the vaults that the vaults like immediately grow and they immediately shift to accommodate the items that people bring in right so we can't see this that that action probably takes very takes place very deep much deeper inside the vault than we can see uh but yeah all of the pieces shift and move and they create new alcoves and podiums and pedestals for the things you've brought and you can probably see too or maybe not see but we know we can actually if everything connects we can probably see a ripple of this we can probably see how some of the text on the walls that we're near begins to like fractal out and like shift and in that same sort of like blue light that the the flames uh, emanate I think like more of that script, almost like with a blue light begins to either grow or change as it finds like new strands to connect to, to like link new parts of, of the knowledge of, of the veil, right? Within the, within the vault. Um, and uh, the collector, you know, bows their head as like the, the mask then changes into an expression of, of, of gratitude as much as a collector can muster. Your donations have been accepted, and they are so uh, graciously uh, accept accepted. I already said accepted. We welcome them, uh, last wish. What can the great, knowledgeable, generous, talented, uh, far-ranging? Uh, what can the what can the collectors do for you? Last of the firelights. Um, well, thank you. Um, this one has come a long way with two spirits in tow, uh, for we need to prove their, their innocence, the, the cleanliness of their souls, the, the resistance of the influence of darkness that is the doom of the veil. But to do so, we will need something in return. Something to bring to the caretakers who guard a beacon. And to this, the the collectors, you know, mass sort of like shifts to the side. There's like a new expression changed. You wish to take something from the vault for merely a brief uh, a moment in time, 
uh, not uh, for any extenuating circumstances. Last wish, it is one thing to allow you to enter the vault and gaze upon the many wonders that we have found in the endless ages of penumbra, but to allow you to take an object from this place, I, it just seems a far cry from what is in the realm of possibility. I, I, uh, you, you, you don't understand. Uh, these souls... Uh, they need this. This is... This is what will allow them... Their... I keep wanting to say penance, but that's not the right word. Their absolution. I know... This one knows that the... Uh, the collectors do not deal much in... Uh, ways of... The heartfelt, let us say. <laughs> uh, you're far more transactional. But even you can see the value in 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 helping these spirits find their way to to help lessen the grip of the doom on this place. And what if you are to fail, Last Wish? If you and I do not wish this upon you by any means, but if you perish out there. Somewhere in the wilderness, what of our treasure that you have taken from this from this well-guarded place? What becomes of it then? Taken by the doom of the veil? Found by some feral spirit? Can we make such a gamble for two? And you can see like a gnar feels like sort of almost like a gut punch. Uh, and I think Chibet is just sort of... Not even, didn't even want to be here in the first place. I already think so lowly of themselves. It's like almost an agreement with this collector. Um, uh, collector, please. Uh, perhaps uh, this one has, has, has come about this the wrong way. Uh, would you allow us to uh, gaze upon a relic of the protectors themselves? And to this, the collector's expression, you know, changes to one that is sort of very uh, discerning, sort of very studying. The protectors, you say? Ah, yes. The guardians of old who lined the heavens of Penumbra, keeping the spirit safe and the afterlight ticking over finely until the doom arrived. These are the protectors you speak of. The ones, and the same. Uh, perhaps if you would just let us see a relic important to the protectors, perhaps that would be enough. Well, you're already here, and I do say we have quite a selection available to peruse. I will show you, but I make no promises of you taking... Anything from these halls. Do you understand? It is understood. Very good. Now, walk this way. As the collector turns, begins to march deeper into the complex, and this is where it very much begins to feel like one of those paintings, right? Where, like, the collector will walk down one staircase, and, like, we're walking behind them, and then suddenly the collector will, like, appear on the ceiling on, like, another staircase, and we can, like, see them each other you know as we're standing and then we walk and then we're here and you know it's sort of like this impossible terrain this impossible construction um and nar says the cut of their jib yes that should have been the the phrase that that we found in that moment but we follow them uh into such a time that we are led into uh a new part of the vault which is is very spacious and just absolutely massive and i mean these are the protectors we're talking about these are the progenitors right of the whole sort of spiritual ecosystem the whole sort of cosmological realm uh that is the penumbra that is the veil so this this place is crafted to give you know due diligence pay homage to these godlike you know deific figures um 
and you know the 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 walls are just lined i would say in this area more so than others where there might be like a single alcove and then some spacing like another alcove like this almost feels like a um almost like a mausoleum right like there's just like out like uh like hole stacked on top of hole on hole on hole on hole that are all filled with things uh, and, and these treasures in particular, I think, are a bit more fantastical. They are cast in sheens of gold and silver and precious stones. Um, they, they emanate an aura that sort of is out of time, even, for in a, a, even in Penumbra, in a place that sort of defies time. These harken back to an age that is older, more primordial, right? More, more almost mythic in scale and scope. Um... And I think, you know, all of us, except for probably the Collector, who for them, this is, you know, I imagine a very sort of routine, just march, you know, through through the halls. Um, for us, being the last of the Firelights and two spirits who are hoping to be saved, um, this is, like, awe-inspiring. We just sort of stand there for a moment, our... our, our well, my mandibles <laughs> uh, agape, you know, their mouths sort of, like, open... Uh, as they stare wide-eyed at, at, at these these un these unfathomably priceless, if if money even matters in a place like this, but like just in terms of the value they have in in cultural significance, in in the revelation, the truth of this place, like holds a lot of weight. Um, but what one are we being led to? Let's see. Let's let's roll on a table. Um, so let's say, let's go with a theme and a story, a theme and a story for our roles. Uh, I'm going to roll for theme first. So one and five death. Okay. Um, and then story one and four death night. <laughs> oh no, Death Knight! Oh, I think I know where this is going. Uh, Artifact. Death Knight. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, I know where my mind is going with this. Um. Ah, oh, but should it be... No, we'll let it. We'll let it be. We'll let it be. We'll let it be. What I'm thinking, um, and so I think almost instinctively, you know, like our antennas sort of twitch, um, and we begin to feel that reverberating presence of the protectors as we are almost guided um, through this place towards a particular artifact in the collection, right? And we we approach this this object and i want to say that it looks like my knee-jerk reaction is a sword so i'm just going to go with a sword because i am seeing knight right um but the sword is shattered you know it is it is broken at maybe like the halfway point um just torn apart by some overwhelming force um and Ooh, uh, Nar says the death knight might not be a bad thing in this context since the firelights and the protectors are all about the process of death and guiding spirits to the afterlife. That is true. That is true. I'm just thinking of, if I'm not mistaken, we are here to find, um, we're here to find a relic that is, that is significant to the protectors. And the last time that... Oh, and, and we had a vision from the protectors that they were if I'm not mistaken earlier, that was inferring that the relic that we were going to find had some, some significance, a secret pertaining to the connection between them and the Doom of the Veil, right? So that is why I'm a little nervous. So a Death Knight could have once been a champion to the Protectors and or the Firelights. Okay, I like that idea, and I think I'm going to... I'm going to... I am going to play with that and, and expand upon it. Um, and so we approach this, this sword. I imagine that, like, being that it's, like, from the protectors and the protectors are all about the spirit world, I imagine it's, like, this almost impossibly crafted, like, 
single, a single, like a single beam of metal. This like, this Quicksilver uh, metal that has, you know, like inscriptions down the length of the blade that's sort of like formed in this almost liquid metal shape. Um, and so we approach it and the protectors are sort of like guiding our steps until we are standing before it and sort of staring at it sort of like wide-eyed as the protector like wheels around to the side of us. Ah, oh, yes, taken an interest in this particular relic, have we? Uh, yes, this one uh, cannot describe, but uh, it, this one feels compelled to learn more. And learn more you should, for this mysterious artifact holds a great deal of knowledge of Penumbra indeed. And there's almost like a shift in the mask. There's almost like a... It's almost taunting. It's almost like this, I know something you don't know, sort of like, you know, shape. <laughs> sort of like feeling that like makes the hair on the back of our carapace, you know, bristle up. Uh, as Last Wish turns their head. Please, Collector. This one knows you know much of the Vale. Surely this artifact is no different, not outside of your knowledge. Share what you know. Well, true the Collectors know a great deal. More than most, more than all who aren't Collectors... But even we did not exist at the very beginning of time, the throes of existence of the veil, as it were. Still, events that transpired in such formative moments in the cosmos, they are still illuminated to us in our studies. The protectors, uh, once, were not so distant from the Vale, from the world of Penumbra. In fact, very much so, the word protector was literal. They marched on these soils in not quite mortal forms, per se, but something more akin to what you or I might share. Semi-physical, tangible, manifestations of their divine will as they saw fit in this land. And with their powers and their armaments of old, uh, the collector says as they gesture towards the, the broken sword, they defended this place against interlopers. Interlopers, like uh, curses, the doom of the veil, <laughs> not quite. You see, those things, at least insofar as you know their names, did not exist at this point in time, no. The darkness that tried to eke into the veil, that was something unnameable. That was something unknowable, reaching from corners of the cosmos that... <laughs> Well, escapes any of a scholar's most keen observations, you understand. Uh, as much as this one can. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, story has it that one of these protectors decided that the current measures being taken by their fellow constituents was not enough to turn back the tides that were pressing against their veil evermore as the eons aged. Sure, the protectors made some headway, pushed this influence nearly out of any recesses of their known world, but it would always return in time, especially if left unchecked. And so one protector decided that it should never go unchecked. 
that instead of merely protecting the veil, that it should instead hunt the veil's enemies, this unknown force. Do you mean to say that a protector abandoned their post? They left the veil? Indeed, I do. They were the very first to do so. As the collected knowledge of the ages so says, one protector moved its way into an unseen recess of the veil, a place where they were all but assured that the various nefarious influences were permeating from, with nothing but their sword in hand. What became of this protector? Well, nothing for a time. The protector had disappeared. And for an unseen amount of aeons, so did any whisper of the previous evils that plagued and befouled the lands. Spirits were free to come and go, the beacon fires were lit, and they were ushered into the safety of the afterlife with no issue. That was until a voice began to call back out from the very pools of darkness from which the last protector had marched. You cannot mean... I do, last wish. There is a secret the protectors would have you not know. That the reason they fled this world, at least the shell of its physical manifestation, was that they had to defend it at a much higher level against an even larger threat. One that originated far more closely to home than they would wish you to know. Collector, do you mean to imply that the doom of the veil is... is the lost protector? The one who defied their brethren to take the fight to the darkness itself and came back stained by it. It is once again not something that any collector can say with 100% certainty, but it is all but the truth in our eyes. And to this, there's, like, just a, a... I think this, like, practically knocks Last Wish off of their feet and sort of, like, collapses downward. If this is true, that means that... That means that the curses... The curses are... Firelights, in a way. Creations of a protector for their own aims in this world. Darker aims. But why would... Why would the Protector do this? Why would they... Why would they betray... Why would they... Forsake the spirits? There is great power to be found in the consumption of spirits. You have seen it. You have felt it. And there are other planes, other places, beyond the humble Vale and Penumbra. Who knows what they were really searching for, reaching for, beyond these borders. But one thing was certain. The protectors would need to be dealt with before they could reach further. And what better way? than by extinguishing their presence in this world. 
the beacons were snuffed, the protectors pushed into the heavens, and the doom of the veil and the curses were free to extend their grip on the veil itself, twisting it to their own ends. And last wish, once again, just recoiling from all this information, I... This one does not believe it. This one cannot imagine that it is true. If so, what is... What am I... What is this one doing? What is the point to... To try and destroy that which gave them life? To bring down a protector? Does this one even have such strength? I... That is not for me to say. Impossible, really, for anyone to say. I imagine this is all terribly painful for you to hear. But, as far as we know, it is the truth. Sort of makes your immediate goals of trying to cleanse these spirits of the dark influence pale in comparison, doesn't it? Oh, sorry. It's never a fun thing, peeking beneath the very fabric of existence and seeing what's boiling up down there. <laughs> and I think this is probably, you know, as untethered, as unbound to their center as Last Wish has ever been. It sort of like is like craning forward, sort of resting on their staff, staring at the broken sword. Uh, th this sort of artifact that the 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 lost protector took with them uh before they were claimed by this unknowable darkness um as the as the collector sort of like watches them them for a moment and even i think the collector realizes that perhaps it is a bit uh inappropriate to linger uh take all the time that you need will be but a, just a shout away uh, as the 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 mass sort of stays aloft for a moment and the the black tatters and like the the clouds sort of like shift and, and sink and swirl back behind the mask until it just sort of disappears in like a puff of smoke and the mask continues to levitate and then it like turns around and begins to sort of like levitate down the hallway to find like a new place to be uh, in this space. And once alone, I think Last Wish sort of like keels forward. Um, and Anar immediately, you know, sort of rushes over and like, and sort of braces Last Wish's arm. And I think uh, Chibet also sort of like scurries forward but doesn't doesn't have the confidence or, or pro probably the physical strength to even hoist uh last wish forward but you know is there sort of for moral support as much as they can be last wish i stand last wish i i understand that this is a lot but don't lose hope now and sort of like begins to lift them anar this one apologizes this one did not mean to lose themselves this is This is... It changes everything. When I awoke, this one awoke. The only thing that motivated this one to move forward to... To live... Was the voice of the protectors, the mission given to this one as a firelight, and to learn... That one of those protectors... For... For abandoned their goal, their their realm of the spirits for their own selfish aims. I this one does not know this one does not know how to proceed. And Anar like swallows hard because obviously understands that like Last Wish is incredibly impacted by this, but also knows that Last Wish 
is like the only sort of salvation that he has moving forward. Last wish, I, I'd i be lying if I said that this wasn't all beyond me. It, it is. Uh, I was a mortal man once. I was a hunter. I was, I, 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 I stalked rabbits and, and wolves in the woods. This, this was, this is asking me to comprehend things that are far beyond what I needed to, to ever deal with in life. But what I do know is that, that you have already done many things that were assumed to be impossible since I, I, I've, I've known you, you've, you've broken a curse on me, you've broken a curse on Shabet. Apparently, you've, you've relit beacons. I, I, I can't speak to why the protectors wouldn't tell you this, or, or why a protector would turn their, their eyes away from this realm that they themselves built. I, I, those are questions that I don't have, but... If your answer, if your question is, where do we go from here? The only answer that I have is, is forward the way we were going. I don't really know where else to turn. And, like, Anar looks at Chibet almost plaintively to, like, say something. But Chibet is probably the, the, the least, you know, equipped person to have this kind of conversation. Um... Uh, last wish. I um. I haven't known you very long, but that this doesn't seem like you. You wouldn't give up, I even if you learned something as devastating as this. I I I think you. I I know you would find a way to to keep moving on. And to this, like, Last Wish looks at Anar and looks at Chibet and kind of knows that they're, as much as they're trying to build them up, that they really need them. You know? That, that they're saying this in hopes to rekindle Last Wish because they need Last Wish to be strong. And Last Wish takes a stand and sort of, like, looks at the sword and says, this one is the last of the firelights. This one's mission was given unto them by the protectors. It was a mission given to them as it was given to countless firelights before them, before another protector, a misguided one, stole from them their lives, perverted this place. If this one is the last of the protectors, then this one decides where the, pro where, if this one is the last of the firelights, then this one decides where the new firelights go. What the firelights are meant to be, what they should be. They should not be tools. They should not be implements used by faraway forces that do not tell them the truth. He like, like the last wish says, is announcing it, you know, almost above, above themselves, like into the ether. They should do what is right for the veil, for that it is right. And that there is no one else left to do it. Even if why they started isn't, wasn't entirely true. Even if who put them on this path may have done so without giving them all the knowledge they needed to succeed. And Last Wish looks at Anar and looks back at Chibet. This one will not forsake their oath. Not like the Lost Protector, not like the Doom of the Veil. This one will not fall prey to the same somber ignorance, the same 
selfish, self-serving survivalism that allowed that protector to become some dark reflection of itself. This one will do better because it must do better. And it starts now. It starts today. Uh, and I think... <laughs> Sort of narrowing uh, their eyes at the sword. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, does Last Wish just take it? <laughs> uh, Toddy says, it starts today, let's fucking go. <laughs> I think Last Wish in this moment being like so emboldened by needing to like not only not only save these spirits but now sort of reverse this entire sort of dark circle the cycle that has happened since this lost protector you know decided that it that it needed to 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 do something outside of the realm of of its brethren i think i don't think he's going to i don't think they're going to wait for permission i think they're going to i think they know the collectors are never going to let them leave with this. And so they're just going to try and take it. <laughs> um, and this might end up being very bad. Oh my god, it's going to be terrible. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. So, why did we get two face cards now of all times? Oh my god. Okay. Um, so, we have a point of inspiration though. So we're going to take our dice. We're going to roll two dice. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, Nar says that we have, we have inspiration. Absolutely, we do. I'm going to use them, I think. I'm going to use the inspiration. Okay, nine. Okay, nine. Okay, nine. Um, and I have a plus one because quick is my plus one stat. Patience is my plus two stat. Right? Um... Yeah, plus one. So that's 10. I still don't think that's enough. Um, because I think jacks are 11, right? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What does this mean? <laughs> um. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, oh, I got an R. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Take another point of inspiration. No, it's still 10 is the highest. Oh my God. Okay, so yeah, jacks are worth 11. So the most we'd have is is 10. Oh, okay. So I think what happens is uh, Last Wish reaches and takes the sword off of the pedestal. And immediately uh, when that happens... I think the 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 blue torchlight like bursts uh, and it changes into like a sinister green, um, which I think I now have to change our music to something a little more <laughs> intense. I feel like I'm listening to Greek right now. <laughs> numbers, <laughs> yes. There's a lot of numbers happening. Uh, I think. The, the, the torchlight changes to green as some of the masks lift off of the wall, right? And like those dark pools of energy like <laughs> like materialize behind them and begin to form like full collector bodies uh, as they sort of like form like a semicircle around Last Wish and Anar and, um, and Chibet who like instinctively kind of like huddle behind Last Wish. So Last Wish in one hand has like a flaming blazing staff and on the other hand has like a broken sword from like a different age. Pretty badass. Um, but is like standing there as the, the, the collectors sort of like encircle Last Wish. Last Wish, one of the voices, you know, emanates. We don't feel that you meant to touch our things, as, like, their hands sort of slowly unveil from out of their, um, 
their cloth and there's like different implements like small daggers or like, you know, clubs or like different like uh, <laughs> objects like coming out of the, of like hold, held in six different arms. We're sure that you did not mean to touch those things. Why don't you put it back before things get ugly? Um, as like last wish turns to face the collectors. You hide in this vault. You keep yourself safe as penumbra around you crumbles under darkness. You hold these artifacts hostage. You keep their knowledge sequestered away from those who could benefit from it, that can use it to save the veil like, like this one could. No longer will this one allow you to squander the knowledge and the prizes of those who have come before for your own aims. This one will make sure that it reaches those who it can help. The spirits, the others like us, the caretakers, the wayfarers outside of your walls. You can either stand before me and oppose me, stop what is right from happening, or you can stand aside. I give you that choice. It is now yours to make. Now make it. And, uh, I guess <laughs> this is where we're going to see if uh, Last Wish can... Oh, gosh, there's a king. Uh, we're going to see. Uh, confront Risk, I think, is what we're doing here. Uh, I think there's a threat involved, so I think it's forceful, right? I think is is the attempt, which I have a zero at, which I don't even think it's possible for me to make. Actually, it's possible for me to make the half roll. It's possible for me to make the half roll. Um, let me roll twice. Ah, oh, it's a seven. That's full darkness. But you are trying to convince them. I, I totally am trying to convince them, but I, I don't think I'm doing it patiently <laughs> or quickly. I think I'm being forceful. I think I think I'm trying to like the force of my personality, I think, is what I'm trying to to leverage. This is probably the most riled up that that um that Last Wish has ever been. Unfortunately, it's a setback and I mark a fatigue. Um uh, to this, the, um, <laughs> th thank you, Loki. I'll have a sip. Uh, to this, um, the, uh, time to stretch. Okay, we'll take a, we'll take a, we'll take a stretch break. Ba -da -da -da, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, did you hear that? Da -da 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 -da. Oh, God. Whew. Oh. How's everyone doing out there in TV land? You guys having fun? I don't know who's still with us. We got Nar with us. We got Ailing with us, it looks like. We got Loki with us. I think Toddy chimed in earlier. Uh, thank y'all for sticking around. <laughs> Ailing redeemed your lurker. Yeah, I see you lurking. I see you lurking. It's good to be back on the Firelight stream. I'm definitely going to have to upload both of these episodes now because I'm one behind. Oh, you and Ailing are chilling in voice chat? Aw. Well, uh, I hope I hope there's a good stretch stream. Uh, well, I hope y'all are uh, having having fun talking about the firelights. Okay, I think that's a good stretch. Ugh, gosh. All right. Um. So what was my result here? It wasn't good. I marked a fatigue. I gotta pull these aside. Why are we getting all these face cards now? Why now? I need them when I'm exploring. Um, okay. So, with that, I think the collectors all sort of like, you know, you hear that like, <laughs> that like chuckle as all of the masks like shift into a, a face that is like actively aggressive. <laughs> um, and uh, they sort of like... Uh, 
uh, fully unveil all six of their arms, all holding various implements. Last wish. You can either relinquish that treasure in your hands, or we can take your hands. That is the choice that you have. Now you make it. Um, and to this, like, last wish, like, takes a deep breath. <sighs> I never wish, this one never wished harm upon you, collectors. This one still doesn't. But this one cannot let the blade go. Then it appears we are at an impasse. It appears so. Then come. It's a waste of time to keep us waiting. And besides, I imagine that staff will make a lovely addition to the collection. And at this point, they all, like, lurch forward as, like, Last Wish, like, raises their staff up and, like, a new blast of light uh, appears. Um, okay. So... Uh, I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a, an executive call here. This isn't really written in the rules, but this feels warranted given the fiction. Uh, I'm going to say that even though we have a zero in force, as long as we're holding the blade, we get a plus one because it makes sense. We should get some benefit for holding this like magical blade of the the protectors, right? Makes sense to me, um, and it should rely on force. The thing is, this game only really has stats for enemies who are curses, not who are, um, who are other spiritual beings. So we're going to have to kind of go with it here. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that the collectors are probably equal in strength to like the lowest level curse, right? I don't think they're strong as a curse. So I'm going to say they're a calamity, right? But to compensate for the fact that there are multiples of them, I'm going to say... Oh my god, we're going to make an enemy of the collectors? Holy shit. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Um, that they are going to be slightly stronger. Uh, I'm going to say they're at six strength. But they operate like a calamity. And then... We'll see what happens. Um, okay. So. Oh, the music is starting to like. Let's see. How about this? Is this a bit more uh, dramatic? Yeah, this feels a little bit more dramatic. All right. So the collectors. Uh, they, I narrated they, they lunge forward. Uh, so I think uh, on this first uh, attempt... Uh, you know, Last Wish uh, brandishes their, their staff and there's a flash of light that boom, emanates outward as uh, they leap back and sort of try to um, disperse, sort of like bewilder uh, the onslaught of collectors uh, as they like lunge forward. This could have been so much easier, Last Wish. We did not want to claim the soul of the last of the firelights, but you seem to leave us no choice. Um, as they lunge forward, uh, so we're gonna go with, I'm gonna draw two, we're gonna go with quick for our first one. Oh my god! <laughs> Why are all of the face cards here? Why are they all here? Okay, roll two dice. Eight, nine, that's still nothing. That's still, that's still big ol' nothing. All right, um, all right, so th they have six strength and we're at three out of, three out of five on our fatigue. Oh my gosh. Okay, so when we are fighting a curse upon darkness, oh wait, upon darkness we evade danger. Oh, so we don't know if we mark fatigue yet. Okay. But we know we're in danger. 
Uh, all right, so then let me go back here. So there still could be a chance we get out of this. A nine and a four, okay. Yeah, fight a curse, we got, okay. We're gonna roll two dice. So this is still quick, which is six. Or five, I should say. So that is higher than one result, which is shade. So when you are evading shade, okay, you still mark one fatigue. Um, so we go to um, blast a, a, a ray of light sort of out of the head of our, our blazing staff. And a few of the collectors who were lunging forward um, are sort of knocked back by this wave of energy. And like, uh, you can see their, their, their dark cloak sort of like evaporate and spool into their uh, masks as they like fling backward to get outside of the range of the glow and then rematerialize, uh, avoiding the brunt of the heat and the light. Uh, but as we are pointing in one direction, uh, one of the uh, collectors from behind sort of appears with all six arms raised above, you know, holding like clubs and rods and like a couple of knives and just clatters down upon us, tink, 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 you know, uh, into our carapace and through our cloak. And Last Wish releases a gasp of pain, ah, uh, as there's some uh, damage inflicted uh, onto their corporeal form as we take the fatigue. Uh, but then Last Wish wrestles forward and sort of, uh, you know, swings out with the with the staff as the collector lurches backward to narrowly miss getting a face full of that flame, um, uh, and then takes the sword at like that same motion, like swings the staff outward, the flame streaking in its wake, and now taking the the broken blade and swing it in the direction of the protector. So I think once again this is going to be a a force action. Um, so we have to roll, we have to take two of the cards. A nine and a two, okay. Okay, so that is a six, which is higher than one. So that is fighting a curse. Upon shade, we stack one of the cards on the curse. Um, okay, and so... Because there are Calamity, red cards count as two stacks, but none of these are red, um, which is their health pool. So we'll just take the nine. Um, and we'll swing our blade outward. If it does come to a boss fight, that, uh, that is, these might just be minions. That's true, Nar. Um, uh, Last Wish swings out with the blade, and this sword, which is broken right? It is shattered. Um, still has an edge on it, which is unreal, right? Like, this is crafted by essentially demigods, right? Uh, and as it bites into the form of, of the collector, um, I don't think, all right, because we're working, like, I think this blade doesn't sunder... Like, it sunders things physically, absolutely, right? Because it is a sword. But because it is crafted by the protectors, I think it does something different. I think it, like, fundamentally, like, erases things from existence. You know what I mean? Like, it is like a blade. It is a blade of spirit, which is crafted to defeat spiritual creatures. So when it cuts into the, to the collector, I think like that it, there's like no blood, there's like no smoke or anything. It's almost like that jagged line that is cut into the form of, of the collector is like deleted. Like it's just like this gaping crevice of mass um, that like sort of, there's like almost like a spark of like, um, uh, of like that ember light, like that golden ember light, which is synonymous with the protectors, right? I think at this point, the broken runes on the blade are also glowing with like that that uh, that reddish gold ember light. Uh, and there's like still like uh, a flash of those sparks that emanate from the strike. But when the blade is like, like retracted, there is just like an absence of being that now exists within the collector. And the kind of... I don't even know if it, it, like the collector recoils, so it's like, <gasps> like a gasp 
uh, of, but it's not even like really pain. It's more sort of a realization that less of it now exists than than it there once was, right? They're being incrementally sort of like annulled from existing. And I think that is like far more terrifying than any sort of physical pain. And there's sort of like this sort of <gasps> this gasp as it like lurches backward and it and it puts like it like drops some of its weapons and like puts its hands on its um on its wound, trying to like understand what's happening to it. Ailing says erased from history and reality. Exactly, like this blade like is literally a universal delete key, right? Um and is like holding holding the wound. What? What is this? What? What have you done to me? As like uh, Last Wish levies the blade at the collector. Nothing that you have not wrought upon yourself. Now stand down. This one does not wish to harm you. But I will continue to do. This one will continue to do so. If you bring this one to do so. Um, and I think. It's gonna try- maybe it's like more of like a, an intimidation. I think it's another force. Or is this patience? Staying the blade. <laughs> Ailing says, now slap them and hand them a physical L. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. I think trying to make the collector stand down is patience. Versus striking them is force. And I think Last Wish is only really- striking reactively, right? The collectors attacked him, them, they shot a fire blast. Uh, the collectors stabbed and, and smacked him, them, they took a slash, right? If that's the fiction we're going with. So I think they're still gonna try and talk the collectors out. Um, so we'll roll, uh, actually we'll first draw two cards. We got a seven and a two. Those are doable. Those are doable. Ooh, those are very doable with a 12. Um, okay. Uh, so to this, um, sort of like holding the blade aloft point of the, at, at the collector saying, this one does not mean you any harm, but this one will bring it to you if you continue, you know, sort of trying to talk them down. Um, because we got... Ooh, wait, actually. That was fight a curse right we got light so we get two cards on the curse one of which counts as two so technically we have four out of six cards on the collectors right now um and i think what happens here is that some of them especially the one that just got the chunk erased from them um like, look towards each other as their faces change into ones of, like, worry and acknowledgement as they, like, <laughs> poof out of existence and, like, their, their, their cloaks ravel back into the back of the masks and the masks, like, shoot themselves deeper into the complex. But a few still remain, right? A few still resist this offer. Last wish. So bold. So misguided. What do you think? That we will allow you to walk away with one of the most sacred pieces of the history of this world? One of the only last bastions of defense against what lies beyond our walls? Oh no, we cannot run. We must stop you from taking it. You can either drop it or we can ensure that you never touch it again. As they like uh, rush forward. Uh, okay, so we're gonna. It's two and seven. All right, let's. What are we gonna do here? I'm gonna go. Last wish. I don't think he wants to use the sword. My my, I don't think he wants to use the sword, as much as as like it doesn't want to hurt them. We're gonna go with patience one more time, 
as they're as they're as they're lurching forward. Oh my god, a four. Uh, what did we? What was the card? A two. So that's higher than one. And then plus two is six. It's higher than one. And that means we get to stack one card, which they're both red. Which means that counts as two, which is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in this moment, I think they both are lurching towards Last Wish. And Last Wish swings the staff up and pounds it on the, the bottom of the the complex as a massive burst of light explodes out where the flame at the top of the staff like just grows in size and it throws the collectors back as they are knocked against the wall all of their weapons sort of like fall from their hands as they like their masks are sort of like all muddled sort of like confused from the impact as they like look up and last wish is standing there pretty much completely encapsulated in like glowing golden roaring firelight you know their 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 markings are like flaring with newfound energy you listen to this one this one is known as last wish the final firelight and now the bearer of the blade of the lost protector this one will take this relic for it is this one's by right and this one will use it to right the wrongs that have been inflicted upon the veil. And they will do it with or without your permission. This is the will of the last of the firelights. This is what the protectors call for in their time of need. You will stand down and know that you must play the rightful place in this course of history. <laughs> and because everyone is saying it in chat, this is the way. <laughs> and with that, I, I do not think that the collectors can refute, uh, can refute that, that statement as they look sort of sorrowfully back towards one another. <laughs> he said the thing. He said the thing. This is the way. Um, the collectors like look sorrowfully at each other as they slowly withdraw their hands into their cloaks. All of their weapons sort of disappearing along inside of the folds of their cloak as they slowly stand. Their heads sort of like bowed, almost like. Uh, it submissively towards like the the demonstration of strength that last wish just showed uh, perhaps we were a little hasty uh, uh drastic even in our measures uh, taken against you last wish certainly who are we to defy the final firelight uh, the 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 arm if you will of the protectors it seems as though we should only act as your willing participants in the liberation of the Vale uh, in any way that we can. <laughs> and we do so wish for the Vale uh, to be healed. Yes, we do. <laughs> as, they, uh, as their like, eyes, as their faces, their, their masks are like trained on the edge of the broken blade, which like deleted a portion of, of their fellow collector just a moment ago. Yes. I imagine you sh this one imagines you should. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's no need for any further dramatics from either party in this uh, transaction, don't you agree? Uh, you have what you came for, and we are more or less intact. You've even given us a, a charitable donation to the vault, which uh, surely uh, could act as a payment of sorts, a, a, a collateral, if you will, for your return of our relic when you're done with it. This one could agree to such an arrangement if you will allow us to pass through your halls uncontested and do not 
plan on creating roadblocks in our journey forward. <laughs> Why, we? We would never be. We are anything but roadblocks. We are enablers of your most heroic schemes. <laughs> uh, we only wish to... Uh, uh, to be a, a, an aid, uh, consider us a repository of of new information, intel, perhaps, on what the Doom of the Veil plans, movements of the curses. We are your eyes and ears in your uh, future endeavors. This could be a mutually beneficial act, then. Indeed, indeed. Now, I believe maybe you should put this away. Uh, the collector says, like, one arm sort of unnaturally extended and, like, on top of <laughs> Last Wish's hand and, like, slowly pushing the blade downward as, like, Last Wish lets the fire, you know, begin to dwindle from the head of the staff. Um, and go on your merry way! Besides, it will take us some time to make adjustments to the vault now that certain things have been shifted. And you seem like uh, there's much to do very busy for the final firelight. Indeed. The journey is not yet over. And Last Wish takes a look at Anar and... Uh, Chibet, who are just staring at him, th at them, with, like, newfound respect, uh, admiration, hero worship. There's, just, like, a glorious moment, the, the, the most, you know, defiant they've seen Last Wish, uh, as they quickly sort of rush, uh, to Last Wish's side, ready to follow suit. Um... This one will keep the end of the promise. The blade will be returned. When it is time. Of course, of course. When it is time. And uh, to this, like, the, the, the collectors slowly draw back. You know, assume their, their smoke-like forms suck back into the masks as they uh, levitate in midair. And then quickly disperse. And, and try to make themselves scarce. Uh, Anar, of course, as soon as they're alone, sort of turns to Last Wish. Last Wish, that was... That was incredible. What, what you did to that creature, what did you... What did you do? This one does not know exactly. Uh, as Last Wish raises the blade and sort of examines it, uh, you know, almost examining their own reflection in the blade... This one could feel when the blade struck that the veil itself somehow got lighter. <laughs> Hailing says gave it therapy. <laughs> therapy at the edge of a sword. <laughs> I guess ultimately, though, a Last Wish did talk them down, as Last Wishes want to do. But yeah, gave it therapy by the edge of a sword. Um... This one felt the world get lighter, the veil almost shrink under the blow. It was as if, it, it, it was as if you, you, you made it disappear. Uh, a piece of the spirit disappear. And, and the collectors there, they are a part of the veil. Just as this one is. Intriguing. Uh, last wish says as they continue to study the blade. But this is no time to... To ponder over such... Uh, existential questions and... And artifacts. Uh, we have a mission. And now we have... A, a, a treasure. To show. To the caretakers. Uh, proof. Of your... Willingness, your commitment to the cause, Anar and Shebet. We must hurry back to them and have you ushered in to your final rest. 
And to this, uh, Anar and Chibet both resolutely nod as they begin to march alongside Last Wish as they move their way out of the vault. And I think, you know, there are no uh, collectors present, but I feel like all eyes, right? Like all of the unseen eyes of the mass that are embedded into the walls are just staring, you know, uh, at the trio as they move through the walls. Um, and like in these impossible staircases, you know, upside down, walking through... Uh, it, oh, infinite corridors until eventually they reach uh the end of their journey which is like the the mouth of the of the cave which once again the the the, the mask door like splits in half and allows them passage uh, fair weather and, and, and fair luck on your travels last wish uh, please uh, do think of us fondly when you're out there this one will Try their best. And <laughs> last one uh, gruffly <laughs> acquiesces as they pass the threshold of the mask as it slowly closes behind them, seals back shut, and the symbol on the face disperses, leaving nothing but their reflections in the mountainside behind as they are now free to continue their journey forward. Um, and let me take a look at our map. So we're here... And the caretakers are... Which one are they at? They're at the King of Clubs. So they are... If, we're, if we are here... Okay, so they're only one space away. That's good to know. That's good to know. But I do think that in terms of our story, we're, we should probably take a break here for now. Um, and save that for another time but wow huh oh i think that was an extra fatigue i didn't mark uh i think it was one fatigue um uh yeah let me move back to the just chat wow okay so what an unexpected turn uh tonight when it came to, uh, we, we learned a lot. We learned a lot of the lore. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I was just going with what I got from the death knight prompt for the, maybe I should have rolled something else for the story. Well, no, I don't know. I was pretty happy though with how that turned out, learning a little bit more about the Doom of the Veil. The Doom of the Veil seems to be a protector which has eschewed their responsibility, went out on their own terms to try and find some way to deal with like the the ever-present darkness of the cosmos which was pressing against the um the Doom of the Veil being a former protector is definitely unexpected. Yeah, I mean like I think I, I in my mind as I was like describing it, I was like I mean, all of the, the lore behind Veil and Penumbra is, like, I think, purposefully vague for you to infer what you want, right? Like, we've already done a lot to give name to the forces that are, like, um, attacking Penumbra. And so, you know, I, I like, the Doom of the Veil is something that was an invention from us anyway. Um, and so to imagine that there was evil outside of the Doom of the Veil, right? Because there's always sort of like a cosmological evil that exists in the multiverse, right? <laughs> um, that of course the protectors would be around to try and, and stave away from the spirit world. But because we have such a specific antagonist in the Doom of the Veil, right? That seems like a very specific villain. So the villain has to have some sort of more personal connection to this world. Whoa, Junji has followed... Junji, thank you so much for joining and following. Um, it makes more sense for the for the Doom of the Veil to have a more personal stake in the story of, of the Veil itself. And so the only thing I could think of in that moment was like the direct parallel of the Protectors. Because the Protectors seem to be... The Doom of the Veil seems to have the same influence over the curses that the Protectors have over the Firelights, right? They are their agents in this world... They communicate almost telepathically. Um, so it's like, yeah, maybe 
maybe that's because the Doom of the Veil, like, has the same powers as the Protector because they once were a Protector and they were somehow corrupted. They somehow, you know, took some sort of strength or some sort of... I don't know what that is yet. Maybe we'll discover together in time. But they took something from that sort of more nameless dark force that was pressing in against the spirit world and, like, you know, claimed it for their own purposes. Um... You know, and it also makes sense that if this protector was one that was more militant, right, was a knight, that, like, that is how it would solve its problems as, as the Doom, right? Like, if it solved problems with, like, violence before... Oh, Ailing! That is so kind of you! Thank you for gifting the sub to Junji! And also, uh, putting us one step closer to our sub goals, uh, for... for the foreseeable future. Uh, thank you so much! Um... So yeah, now that I think about it, um, it does kind of, like, hindsight being 2020, uh, I'm getting a very, uh, what's, what's the character from Dark Souls 1, the knight that, that, that goes to fight Manus and is, like, corrupted? I'm getting that sort of, whoa, Jordan Jewel, subscribe with Prime! Thank you so much, y'all are, like, too kind. Oh my gosh. Um... Uh, Oscar or Artorius? Ar Artorius, that's the one. The boss fight. That's, like, now the vibe I'm getting from... I mean, obviously, I don't think the Doom of the Veil is, like, a Dark Knight. But now I'm seeing that... Like, now anymore, they've been transformed. But, um, now I'm seeing that sort of parallel, right, to the story. Um, so I don't really know what that sort of ever-present darkness was that led the, the Doom of the Veil down that path. But I, I do find that very interesting. That's where it led. I also, uh, you know... It, we got into a fight, which is always fun. <laughs> um, and thank you, everyone, for giving giving us some points of inspiration with their channel points. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we were able to make any of them count, uh, but we tried our damnedest um, to make them count, and that's all that really matters. Uh, but yeah, this I think this has a lot of interesting implications for the lore, for... Also for... Um, last wishes um relationship to the protectors because i mean that's a pretty big secret to keep from the last firelight you know um and like a very existential sort of conundrum that like you know not only do we know now that the curses are spirits that have been perverted right that they're also kind of like what the like the function of a firelight is to to the to the protectors to curse i wonder Ooh, that's interesting i wonder if that means that firelights are also spirits i wonder if firelights are spirits that are turned into firelights you know because maybe they do like good deeds or whatever so whenever they step into the fire and they're transported to the afterlife maybe some spirits are repurposed and turned into firelights because of like their their you know noble hearts which is kind of interesting when you think about how last wish first woke up in that like cosmic egg and had like no idea where they began you know that's kind of that's kind of interesting i mean i don't think last wish knows this i think this is a secret I, this is like meta knowledge right but if we're making a parallel between how the protectors work and how the doom of the veil works we know the Doom of the Veil preys on weak souls and turns them into curses. So what's to say that the Protectors don't take particularly strong and noble souls and turn them into firelights? You know? Oh, Nar, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. That begs the question of who Last Wish was before being a firelight. Holy hell. That's cool. That's And that's a thing we don't know yet. Um, it also begs the question that why can't the protectors make new firelights? I guess because the Doom of the Veil is too strong now. And all the beacons are unlit. And because the beacons are unlit, there's no way to create... Oh, that's interesting. Mmm. That's very interesting. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm catching up with the chat here. Uh, Last Wish is gonna fall to the dark side. No. Dark Wish. Oh my god, that's badass. Dark Wish. Therapy Mantis versus... <laughs> I don't know. What is the what is the opposite of therapy for Dark Wish? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, 
I don't know, new metal, new metal mantis. <laughs> I don't know. Um, hilarious. Uh, Doom of the Veil is a mood, I can tell. Anarchy mantis, that's pretty good too. Um, roll to seduce. Roll to seduce. You want to seduce the Doom of the Veil? You want to seduce the very, the very concept of, of, uh, moral degradation? <laughs> All right. Who, who am I? Who am I to stop you? Um, <laughs> Junji says yes. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, holy hell, though. That was a really interesting session. And I like, um, Hailing <laughs> says, who do you think we are? That's true. <laughs> this one can fix them. This one always thinks that he could, that they could fix them. And this one has had a decent track record, I guess, except with the collectors. Although I think the collectors are like deep beyond depraved. The collectors are like, we're totally fine to let the entire spirit world collapse around us as long as we can collect all the fun trinkets and know everything. As long as we can hold a monopoly over all cosmic knowledge and all the treasures in the multiverse, just let the Doom do whatever they want, you know? Um, uh, uh, Loki says, Ailing, Junji, and myself are planning on watching The Mandalorian. Oh, you mean the new episode? Like the one that just dropped? Because I haven't seen it yet. I would be down. Um, I was actually planning on doing that. Uh, I still have to pack. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, Disney slash uh, Star Wars. We're not planning on watching The Mandalorian. No, De definitely not going to do that. Uh, that would be bad. Um, no, I mean, I, I say I have to pack, but like I. I can do both. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> um, but not that we're going to do it. We're not going to do it because that would be illegal. So, you know. Uh, but, no, thank you everyone for joining tonight. Um, I had such a, a fun time getting back to the swing of things with Firelights. It's always one of those things where I get so nervous when I haven't played for a while because I'm like, I'm not going to remember what I'm going to do. How am I going to be entertaining? I, you know, but then I get into it and then we start having fun. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy the story. I, I, I was just freaking myself out for no reason because, you know, I'm a human being um, or am I? A firelight. Um, but no, thank you everyone so much for joining tonight. Uh, I appreciate you and your time and energy as always. So, 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 so much. Uh, Loki says, you did very good. Don't worry, Headpats. Listen, that's like the eternal dungeon master in me. I don't know if all, if any of y'all have ever like DM'd, you know, for your friends, like DM campaigns. Uh, but that is like, like I will literally run like a, you know, four hour session with my friends and, I, you know, it will be filled with, like, all of this cool lore and combat and, like, world building. And then as soon as it's over, I'm like, did my friends have fun? Was I was I a good dungeon master? Did they enjoy this? Am I am, am I making a fool of my... You know what I mean? And then you, like, text your friends, like, hope you had fun tonight, guys. Like, <laughs> like it's just like... <laughs> oh, cat? Wait, there's cat? Is Piper in frame? Where's the baby? Oh... Oh, yeah. You can see her little eyes glowing. Hi, baby. Oh, Piper. Oh, She's being rug. She's good at being rug. Look at her go. Piper. You wanna see? Nah, she's... She's she's KO'd. Uh, Piper is best girl. And I do, I do owe chat more Piper picks. Um, I mean, like, isn't everyone's gonna pack up and come over from... <laughs> yeah, because... I'll bring pizza. Ooh, okay. Now you make me want some food that I can't have access to. Best rug cat, yes. Uh, but yeah, so don't mind me. That's just me being like, oh, I want to be a good dungeon master for my friends. That's me uh, doing that again in a different realm. Uh, but I'm talking too, too, too much. Thank you all for joining tonight. Uh, it's always so fun to have everyone in chat. Thank you for everyone who threw us new follows. Thank you for those uh, who donated subs to the chat. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's so magical to know that this space exists and these people are here uh, and they keep coming back to watch storytelling and I love role-playing games. They're like my favorite thing. So to share that with people is always uh, very impactful for me. 
Uh, so thank you for your time and your energy. I am Wolf Scott, your host and dun dungeon master of level one adventuring. What? Oh, she did do a big stretch. You got to say a big stretch when she does a big stretch. <laughs> um, what is level one adventuring? We are a role-playing uh, stream, YouTube channel. Uh, please follow us there if you haven't yet. We actually just broke 100 subscribers on there, which is pretty awesome for us. It means we are one tenth of the way there from being uh, verified for monetization. So there you go. Um, but follow us there. Follow us on all the socials. Uh, we talk about role-playing games, um, both tabletop and digital. Um, big shout out to Streamlabs and Stream Spell for providing all of the digital assets for the stream tonight. And there's an affiliate link down below if you want to make use of them yourself. Thank you to Tabletop Audio for providing free adventure sounds and backtracks for what we've, we've watched tonight from what I saw in chat. Some of the music synced up really well to certain moments in the story, which is great. Um, and, oh, please make sure to follow the Discord. The Discord is where everyone hangs out. We share memes, we chat. It is going to be a play-by-post uh, role-playing game server space too as well very shortly. So come there for that as well. Um, with that all being said, y'all are the best. Uh, I will see some of you on the Discord very shortly. Uh, yeah, there wasn't any crackling, so all good. Uh, that's good to know. It's so intermittent. It's like so finicky. I don't, I, I, I don't know why, but that's good it didn't. Uh, but thank you so much, and with that being said, I think I am going to make a snack and uh, prepare my life for what's coming next, and I have to give that baby some love back there with those creepy glowing eyes. Uh, and so I will see you then, and until then, be well, be good, and we'll talk soon.